It's not like my old self. I'm not in character anymore. I'm me. I'm not hiding behind that anymore. Being in Blur has allowed me to travel and hear the music that's being made all over the world. I'm not really one of those people who believes that if you're a musician, you can just leave that behind and start getting into politics. Music is something that should speak for itself, straight from the heart. It took me a long time to understand that. I hope we can keep doing it this way, making music and art that are pure products of our influences while not really having to let the whole celebrity side of it get in the way. Then maybe more virtual bands will come out and do the same thing. I like to go to Africa purely with something to do. I'm not very comfortable getting into an armor-plated Land Rover and going to see things with my hand yell. You know, it's not me at all. So I like to hang out and, you know, really get to know people and try and do something that resonates with them. The whole period has taught me that I enjoy being part of an ensemble rather than just a front man. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy that too, but I get more enjoyment out of really listening to everyone. I'm not a monarchist, but I'm English, and I have an irrational emotion for my country. I was approached by Oxfam to go to Mali as their ambassador and get involved in their various initiatives out there, but I felt that was missing the point of using me. A musician. Whether people like it or not, China is incredibly important to the future of mankind. For me, this is something that we all need to have intelligent discussions about in America, in Britain, in Europe. What you learn from working with other performers and musicians is invaluable, really, and can only help you grow. <laughs> I mean, if you spend your whole life focusing on yourself, you're not really learning much. I want to be a better person in every aspect. I really don't feel I've in any way fulfilled my potential in every area of my life, but I'm optimistic. No, every album is something like a snapshot. It only shows one moment in time. It shows what we feel and think right at that point in time. Nothing more and nothing less. When you're doing a deal with someone in the Southern Sahara, it's a very different way of doing business than in London. You can't sign them in the usual way because they'd end up getting ripped off, which would defeat the object of setting up a label like that. You know, there are many alter egos and gorillas as a collective of alter egos, really. I think anyone who gets involved in it has to sort of accept that nothing is really as it seems. The gorillas cartoons seem more real to me than the actual people on TV. Because at least you know that there's some intelligence behind the cartoons and there's a lot of work that's gone into it. So it can't all be just a lie. China is one of those vast continental conglomerates that, I mean, if they were to start a tourist trade in China, they'd just buzz people in from another province. You know what I mean? Their very self. Contained. As a musician, usually music is your way out. Trying to write music that's sensitive to 400 years ago takes a bit of madness, as it's such a long stretch of time. Whenever you're writing something that's reflective, you have to put yourself through some sort of ordeal just to understand the way you're feeling. The things that make me happy most are my family and working. If you don't see something as a career, but 
as an important part of your life, you don't know how you're going to feel about it. I can't be bothered anymore about giving songs titles. I enjoyed history at school. I'd always had a sense of pagan England. I think pop music is a great place to get new ideas across. And there are no stars in that you're never really sure who's doing what and what voice is what and, you know, what I mean. It's supposed to be quite elusive. As soon as it sounds fine, I'm on to the next thing, man. The cartoon is a metaphor really for the fact that it's almost impossible in our celebrity-obsessed culture to move around genres and sort of change you ideas. Change your face, you know. More and more cultural groups are cross-pollinating and we're getting much more interesting art as a result. I'm English and I started off as a songwriter, so I can't really escape that. It's there. It always struck me that Africa was, in a strange way, a futuristic place and had elements and vibes and spirits that were going to inform the future. Africa Express is an attempt to engage that power outside Africa and for everyone to benefit from it. I spent two years figuring out how I could turn it into something that would satisfy me as a musician, but also make some kind of cross-cultural link. I feel that I kind of at least touched on the possibilities of cross-cultural music, but it is a lifetime's work and I don't profess to be anything other than a novice at it. I don't need to be a frontman all the time. And in fact, the older I get, the less of an urge it is inside me to play that role. I've still got it inside me, and I do occasionally allow it out. I'm a working musician, so it's what I do. I kind of always have lots of plates spinning, and it's the ones that keep spinning the longest that I end up doing. 